Hey. hey Jesse, how are you doing? Good. How's your summer going? Oh, it's uh just all right. <laughs> I don't know. Yours. You get any time off? Do you go anywhere with your family or stuff? Yeah, yeah. We went to the Cape the other week um a few weeks ago. Oh, and nice. then uh and then we're going up to Maine later. You? Uh just a few small trips. My older daughter had uh ACL surgery a month ago. Oh, kind of waiting to see how her recovery went before we plan much, but she's doing great. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 It's actually funny. I, um, yeah, I've known, um, two like teenagers that have had it in the last year and they, they bounce back pretty fast. I'm surprised. I guess it's just Crazy. different. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah there's, that's great that she's doing all right. Yeah. I mean, she's already, you know, she's wearing a brace, but walking around, no problem, like, you know, yeah. exercising and everything. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. I know I had knee surgery when I was young years ago, but um, I'm on a meeting. I can't hear you. It took physical therapy. It took me forever to get back, yeah. you know, but I think it's probably the technology's changed. And yeah. I, mean, I mean, they say it's at least seven or eight months until you're fully back to sport, right. but just mobility wise, no issues. So that's great. All right. Hello, gentlemen. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Nate. I hey Bruce. Hey something. Fred. Yeah. Hey. I think Karn was questionable. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, I I don't know if Janet's free as a attendee or not. So I guess we could get things rolling. Um recording's already going, sounds like Nate. Yes, so we've yep. officially started. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, we can start. Yeah. We can do okay. roll call. I guess we could do roll call attendance. We could wait one more minute just to see if anyone else Sure. Joins. Uh -huh. Oh, there's Janet. Janet's in the other man, another meeting. I mean, in the yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. She's attendee. Yep, that's Janet. We'll bring her over in a minute. This. Uh, I mean, I I guess the. We don't know where we where Janet is in this whole thing at this point. I read something in the bulletin, which was my first inkling that uh, there was some new eruption of contention in town. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to talk about that a little bit too. Um, but at least for some committee, she's not officially a member, so okay. we'll bring right. her over as a as an attendee. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do a roll call vote. Yeah. Um. Please say if you're here, I want to call your name. Uh, Bruce? I'm here. Fred? I am here. If you can hear me, it's uh, you're a okay. little bit low. I'm going to try and increase my volume. Oh, oh I, can, I can move good. closer, too. Yeah. You're good to us. I can hear you clear and loud. Any louder would be deafening. Okay. Uh, I, Jesse Major, am here. And Karen Winter is absent. Okay, um, I almost had the minutes ready, but not quite. So no minutes to approve yet. I'll get them up hopefully for everyone to look at for next week. 17. We're meeting again. Mm -hmm. okay. And yeah, so any announcements that we need to make? Nate, did you have anything for us to think about? Uh, yeah, I, I was gonna just say that the um... The housing trust in the town just contracted with um, a consultant to update the or write a new housing production plan, and so uh, I think that you know the planning board can be a part of it, and this housing subcommittee could be as well. You know, uh, there'll be public forums and chances to comment, and so you know, as the draft. I mean, this is. I mean, we just met last week as a kickoff meeting, so nothing's you know, it's an eight to ten month process. But as it moves on, I think you know that this committee could be. You know, we could review a draft plan or goals or things or help um you know and provide comment to the uh to the consultant sure that sounds productive actually that'd be great yeah i mean the housing production plan is focused on affordable housing but it it you know it's actually it does document the housing market in general and the need and then it you know specifies actions for mm -hmm. affordable housing but in general we met with a consultant and we said um in our scope of work we included tasks outside affordable housing. So, you know, looking more generally at students and what are some strategies there and then just housing uh, strategies in general for say missing middle or higher income as well. So 
uh, they understood and that, that. And the focus there is on new stock, I assume, right? Yeah, and and some of it would be also on strategies for um, you know, you know. So in terms of the demand or need, right? So some of it would be if you know there's a need for, um, you know, say, um, you know, family how you know housing for families or multiple individuals or something. You know, we had we talked about, you know, could there be more conversions of properties to two or three units, and what does that look like in certain zones as opposed to just saying, yeah, like let's just build new everywhere. You know, we had suggested that some of the strategies could be reusing existing or infill or, you know, just like actually looking at it a little bit more, um, you know, than just saying like, okay, let's just tear down and build new. Or, you know, I think the last housing production plan, uh, we asked them to look at model sites and they looked at four sites, but they were sites that, you know, there could be development. But we said, you know, it'd be really great actually if you looked at a neighborhood and said, okay, what is appropriate here? What do you think is appropriate? Uh, whether it's a, you know, townhouse ADUs or something. And so, you know, he said the, the important thing is if you say there's a need for housing, right? Say they come up with and say, oh, you need housing, 500 housing units or something. How, what does that actually look like? Like, what does that mean for the town? And if it's not all students, what does it look like if it's, you know, smaller units or if it's, you think it's for families or retirees or, you know, whatever. And so um, I don't think the, the housing plan from 13 kind of spoke to that, you know, kind of that level of detail. And we said, we'd like to get there on this one, just, you know, what does it actually look like? What does it mean for those strategies if you say that in the plan? And so, yeah. Yeah. Great. What's the consultant's uh, name or what is the firm name? Uh, it's Judy Barrett. Um, and so I think it's just Barrett Consulting Group. Judy had been uh, a planner and, uh, and, you know, and she's been um, working for a long time in the state and she's out of Hingham, Mass. And she she helped actually on one of the the comprehensive housing market studies. She had been brought on by RKG near the end just to do some fine tuning. And she's familiar with Amherst. And uh, so okay. she and her she and her staff will be out here doing that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And you, um, last me last the subcommittee met Nate. You mentioned you were hoping to have new staff on board, and that might get some assistance with data collection, stuff like that. Any updates on that for us to know about? Well, we have Greg, you know, he's the part-time um, planner and housing kind of housing planner. So he's, he's doing some work and we're, you know, we still have a vacant planner position. We're hoping to get some interviews going this, um, you know, late summer, early fall to have someone on board. So yeah, that'll help. But I think the housing trust has been interested just like the planning board in terms of getting data from UMass. So they provided a list of questions to the town manager's office, you know, and I don't know where it'll lead, but, you know, they're leaving it with them. You know, the town manager has, wh whether it's like weekly or monthly meetings and they, you know, they asked some, some of the same things the planning board had been asking in terms of data, you know, numbers, um, other things for housing. And so, uh, yeah, I think Greg is helping with that. And then he's also helping, um, um, we have, you know, our subsidized housing inventory, which is just the affordable units, but he's going to start, uh, he's been documenting all those in terms of, you know, rents and number of bedrooms and other things. And so he's, you know, doing some data collection. I guess if we have anything specific to, I mean, he has some, might have some time that he could help with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, other announcements from anybody? I guess I wanted to say, unfortunately, I need to leave at noon today. Um, so I'll have to cut this a little short, uh, since we won't have quorum if I leave, but mm -hmm. it's what it is. Uh, okay. So third agenda item is just continued discussion of rentals and possible regulations and policies. Uh, unless there's objection, I'm going to bring Janet over to join the discussion. Yes, that's good. Great. <clears throat> There's Janet. Hi, Janet. You're muted, but that's fine. Just so you know. Hello. Thank um, you for having me. <laughs> sure. I I wanted to I guess open the discussion. A couple things I read this week and uh, a couple conversations I had the prior week. To be honest, had me pretty discouraged about what we're trying to accomplish with this subcommittee. 
So I, I wanted some feedback from you all too, to try and help me get energized again. Um, what is uh, discouraging? Yeah, so I was thinking about sort of the process for the overlay that we just went through and great, we moved it along and how that basically needs to go you know, to the council and maybe come back to us. And I was thinking about how really anything we come up with, I will go through the same process, right? Yep. Um, and the, as far as I can tell, this conversation we're trying to have has been ongoing for a dozen years, right? And uh, in one reading, way or another, it's forever, yeah. And and reading about the almost appointments to the planning board and how the voting went just made me think there's not a lot of appetite from the council to move in the direction I think we are focused on. Combining that with the fact that I personally feel um, I don't have the skill set to actually put something together as a proposal. I have lots of opinions. I can look at other strategies and, and think that makes sense. That doesn't, but it's beyond my knowledge. And just like the overly, it really has to come from experts, meaning staff, to put something concrete together to then try and move it along in the process it will have to take. And, and so I, I, I'm not sure what, that's, that's leaving me feeling like, I don't know, I just don't know what to do. I don't know where to put my energy. And so we can have lots of conversations, but unless it's going to come up with a real concrete something, uh, it feels like spinning wheels. Right? And I know you all have been engaged in this much longer than I have. So I guess I was hoping we could come up with a real defined hmm, goal for the near future. And how, I don't even know how to begin to figure that out. Okay. So please help me help me on this front. And and because it's a big time commitment, we're all making big time commitments to do this and it should feel like it's worthwhile, right? Uh, well, my view is that uh, uh, going back most of my adult life is that uh, um, the uh, the leader of an, of an initiative like this needs to have a hatchet to bury. Um, that's usually the more effective leader. So uh, if you don't have a hatchet to bury, <laughs> it's hard for us to uh, um, to function well. I mean, we basically got to help you bury your hatchet. Uh, it's a fairly militaristic and, and fairly aggressive notion, but it seems to me that good leaders have always got something that uh, is challenging them and that they want to... Um, for example, I mean, if you felt that uh, minimum distancing uh, of, of, and the student home uh, designation, which is what some towns like Amherst have done and others have decided definitely it's not their thing, uh, then we would have to figure out uh, whether that we were you know, why the ones that successfully implemented that. Uh, uh, I mean, there's work to be done to try and you know build a case if that's what you want to do. Um, yes. but, Sorry uh, to jump in. That is, a, you know, in the top of my mind, that is what I would love to accomplish. A, and it seems like A, just defining student rental, somehow getting that to happen yeah. legally. And there's that seems questionable also. But again, that's where my knowledge and ability to even put together a proposal it, I, I just don't have that skill set right well um uh, 15 months ago that's where my head was i thought that that was what we needed to do we needed to recognize that we had a lot of student rentals and we should uh, um, be um, uh, we should we should uh, follow the logic of of, of that and uh, define a student rental and then um uh, be in a position to act in a various ways. Um, but I shifted from that viewpoint somewhat, not because I thought it wasn't so such so logical, but just that I thought that there became a better way of handling it, which was uh, trying to uh, find places where we could aggregate student housing in larger densities that would be 
uh, mutually benefit, which would be beneficial for more for or more parties. So that's uh, and and that's another strategy that towns like Amherst have been doing in one way or another, and and that uh, and that became more interesting to me. Um, mm -hmm. The minimum distancing uh, seemed to be. Um, Well, because I haven't pursued it, I haven't had the, the arguments clear in my head for quite a while, but it, it certainly seemed to have constitutional challenges, um, <laughs> which I couldn't articulate, just for what I gathered from talking to others. And uh, it also has um, some of the, uh, to, 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 to put a, a similar uh, pattern in, uh, to, to cite a similarity in uh, in in the case of small hill towns, for example, and septic systems, uh, there was a similar kind of minimum distancing logic applies there, where they use a septic uh, system, uh, septic laws to basically uh, make uh, very large acre lots, and they basically distribute it. They 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 distribute development through the woods, very much like a minimum distancing regulation with student housing tries to do it in the developed parts of town. And I, I, I've always resented that and not approved of that. And then I, as I began to notice the similarities between minimum distancing and, and septic tank regulations, I, I thought, oh, am I just doing the same damn thing that I, I concluded a decade ago was, was, um, was, was silly, was, was, was not a good policy. So that was part of the reason why I drifted away from it as well. Um, and, uh, and 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 we don't seem to. Some people in town don't seem to have the appetite for it. But I'm not sure that they've had a solid argument uh, rammed down their throat either. Uh, which I'd be quite happy to help you do if you want to do it. But yeah. I'm not going to leave that charge. Gotcha. Not yet, anyway. Brad, you want to join in? Yeah, um, I have a, a huge problem with it. Um, speaking as a landlord for 52 years who uh, has rented to students and in the same apartments rented to uh, elderly people, one of whom actually in while a tenant uh, died, uh, expired in, in that apartment. Um, and I don't know how uh, it's really practical uh, without an enormous uh, limitation of freedom that uh, that presents constitutional challenges, as Bruce mentioned, uh, uh, to this. I think uh, the I think the solution has to be to shift the market. We the the uh, the U drive overlay, I think, will be quite meaningful in that direction and uh there's, there's there's other things that we can do to uh uh discourage the uh the abuses without you know i i, I don't know how i would cope with it as a as a as a landlord uh, uh you know you know first uh rent to someone who was not a student and then rent to, you know, and then periodically people can decide, you know, while well, I'm here and I think I'm going to enroll in the university and then, then what happens? Uh, I see all kinds of practical issues to trying to uh, uh, identify what is a student house as far as the zoning bylaw is concerned. Uh, I think there's real problems to that, so uh, I'm I'm not convinced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I think we shouldn't conflate density and student housing, and so, um, you know, we could do do strategies in the residential neighborhoods to you know dilute the impact or control the impact of student housing, yet see some increased density, triplexes, quadplexes in the RG. 
Um, so I wouldn't, you know, and and basically we could build another thousand units on University Drive or two thousand, and that's not going to help the RG, right? So that just doesn't help. So I feel, you know, I came to this meeting thinking we have two t two cities that have, you know, Ithaca and um, I want to say State College, but I might be wrong. They've taken two different strategies. One in Ithaca was to reduce the number of unrelated people, and then I think State College. Um, did the minimum distance requirement. So I, my suggestion was for the next meeting, let's look at those bylaws or whatever they call them and then get on the phone and talk to people. I'm sure they define student rental. They might have certain zones um, and just see how it worked and what were the problems. Um, we do, we're not putting landlords out of business by any of these strategies. It's just reducing their ability to rent to students, but that will open up a lot of space for the many people I talk to in their 20s and 30s, 40s and 50s who want to rent in Amherst and the, a lot of the local, the house rentals are substandard and expensive. And so maybe it will lower rents a bit because you know people won't be paying a thousand dollars a bed, but I think we just we should look at successful models and implement them. Otherwise we can't just throw our hands up and just say, you know, we think it's not going to work. We think there's a legal chat problem. We think it's too complicated. Let's look at the live examples. Let's look at the language and let's find out how it worked. What worked, what didn't work. Um, but, you know, I don't see the constitutional challenges to telling landlords, you know, we know students aren't a protected class. You know, no law or rule will work out, will work out perfectly in 100% of the cases. So there might be some people that are kind of impinged on and things. But I, I my feeling was, like, let's just look at these things, get on the phone, see how they worked, and then start considering them. Um, I also think we need to address the issue of multifamily housing because nobody is going to accept great density in the neighborhood if they think it's going to be filled with students. And there's not an owner-occupant or some kind of limitation on the number or percentage of students in that in that rental. So if we can't address and look at those issues, who's going to do it? We're just going to sit back and just wash, you know, wash, I mean, watch, watch students. I mean, I think we're at 70% of our, our population is students, maybe 65%. Are we going to go to 80? And, you know, I, I love Amherst in the summer, but, you know, it's not exactly sustainable economically for businesses or the thriving, you know, our community, our schools, our volunteers, right. you know, so I really, I really think let's just look at concrete examples. Let's talk to people how they worked. Let's figure out the kinks. Um, a definition problem is always a definition problem. It's probably been solved by somebody. It's never going to work perfectly in all circumstances. I get, I, I completely agree with everything you just said. That's that, nice. That, well, <laughs> no one ever maybe, says maybe that. I, maybe I didn't make my, myself clear. It's the, it's the implementation and the process piece I'm struggling with to see how to move forward. I mean, we can't even get time on the planning board for this discussion. That's why, isn't that right. why you're here? Yeah, yeah, yes. But, <laughs> but, 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 I mean, that to me is, is telling me whoever is setting that agenda, whoever is, you know, ha has made us need to do it this way, it's just discouraging to think it's going to move anywhere. You know, okay. Nate, can I and, put you on the spot? I have never in my five years on the planning board or my time when I used to attend zoning subcommittee meetings or in town meeting, which, you know, makes me vast and old, heard the planning department say, we see a problem with too many students in the neighborhood and the negative impact. I see it in the market, market studies. I see it in the production plan. I don't know. I think it might be in the master plan about mixed neighborhoods, but I've never had, uh -huh. I've never heard the, anyone from the planning department say, we acknowledge this is a problem and yeah. it needs to be solved. Yeah. Am I, am I wrong? Am I missing that? Cause I, I, you know, and so, you know, I don't think, and also I don't think the town manager sees it as a problem. So I think that's what you're talking about, but that's the politics, but not the solution in a funny way. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's complicated in that, um, like you just said, sometimes it's not about, you know, you can't say that you can't categorically say that all students are bad neighbors. And so, you know, it becomes about, you know, how, how is it managed and, 
you know, what are the impacts? And so, you know, I've said with the, um, you know, for, in terms of housing, that students are difficult because they shift the market in terms of pricing and other things, right? So it's, it's, it's hard to say, well, you know, the students are not what we want in residential districts. I think, it, you know, I do think there's impacts from having the demand from the students. And so, you know, if, if I think it's just kind of that fine line, um, but I, I think, I think it, I think, you know, the studies show that, right. That there has to be some, you know, some controls or some measures to mitigate what, what this, you know, what that housing, the student housing market is doing to the general housing market in Amherst. That's not saying what, you know, let's try to deter students. Um, uh, but I, you know, I, I think I was going to speak to kind of Jesse, your, your thoughts, you know, to me, the framework is, if we said, okay, one goal is, okay, where do we allow students and, you know, whether, what is that and where do we have say other measures? It's like, you know, I think, um, you know, one point years ago, the planning department thought about allowing much greater density where there are existing apartment complexes. And, you know, maybe in certain parts of town, we actually allow boarding houses. You know, right now we're really strict about certain things, right? Like why couldn't you have 10 people living in a structure if it's big enough to support it? And then on the flip side, maybe, by zoning district, we, right, we are, we're stricter in terms of owner occupancy, or we change the number of units allowed on a property. And I feel like, you know, maybe it's that framework of, okay, what are the strategies we're looking at? You know, so Janice mentioned a few that we could look into, um, you know, we could take from other towns. You know, I, I do think the minimum number of unrelated in a, in a unit is tricky because if we end up doing that and enforcing it, we're just actually going to, you know, you know, the students will want to be somewhere. And so does that mean that there's going to be more places that could be rented in Amherst as opposed to, well, right now, if there's four people in a house and we reduce it to two, that means we've just me meant that there's, you know, thousands of more units that might need to be rented because where are they, where are they going to go? Like, are we just pushing the problem somewhere else? Um, you know, and I, so I, I, so some of me would be like, you know, let's look at that framework. Okay. You're like, you know, yes, density, student housing, you know, other measures, whatever we want to call it, um, you know, you know, strategies one and two or whatever objectives one and two. And we just kind of go through that, set up a kind of a matrix. And, and I think knowing that those are the goals, maybe what we push for are some simple, I don't want to say they're simple, but you know, something like, what if we do say, we just want to change density in RG, like we just, it's a very clear thing. Like, here's what we want you know, no more than three units per acre and owner occupancy requirement. And, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just, you know, yeah. I feel like we'd have to kind of break it down to something that we think is manageable and it might take a bit to get there. Um, I don't know if there's an easy solution, but I just, and I'm kind of thinking of a way to right, kind of to your point, Jesse, how do we operationalize it? Right. How do we take something, some ideas and make it something we can bring forward? Yes. I, I think, I, you know, my, the way I'd like to spend my energy is basically capture what you just said, which is thinking about the RG district and the other neighborhoods that are pricing out families and workforce. This is Bruce, your main idea from our first meeting, like what should be the focus, which I still completely agree. That, that to me is a great goal and driving force for what I want to accomplish. And yeah, the overlay and increasing density in other places is great, but that's a much longer term solution, right? And I, I really feel like there's urgency to, to whether through zoning or one of these other regulations, and it's not about not wanting students. It's really about allowing other, other people than students to live in our neighborhoods, right? So yeah, maybe the uh, looking at our zoning is is a better approach rather than trying to create new definitions and regulations. I I don't know. That's what I'm struggling with. Exactly. Bruce, you had your hand up. Oh, you're you're, still, you're muted, Bruce. Hmm. I must have been muted by somebody else. I, I did, um, yeah. uh, the. Uh, building houses or building buildings takes time, but it's very clear that also uh, building a consensus to get a positive vote at town council is going to take time. And it's not clear that uh, that, that that's quicker. In fact, it may not be. Um, a couple of things I was going to say was one is that uh, the 
um, when I was talking to the person at Ithaca and I was kind of astonished about the uh, the unrelated family or living part, you know, restrictions they have there with one family and uh, one unrelated persons in some zones and two in others. And and as you said, uh, Nate or, or or someone that you that has the unintended or maybe the inevitable consequence of shifting and pushing it and spreading it again around. Uh, I didn't push this at Ithaca, but I could. But my guess is that in Ithaca, where you've got the college town up on the hill, that the intent of that kind of a regulation in a place like Ithaca could be exactly that, that they 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 haven't got this uh, rather draconian, uh, unrelated uh, uh, partnership, uh, unrelated family living restrictions all over town. They probably just got it in, in, the, in the flat area downtown there and with the intention of pushing the uh, the denser uh, unrelated uh, accommodations and so forth further up the hill into College Town, we don't have quite such a um, uh, 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 a defined uh, structure as they do in Ithaca, where a very definite part of the town is called College Town, and a and a very definite other part of the town is 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 the old town. So maybe when we dig deeper into that, as Janet's suggesting, we would find that out and we might find out that it's a situation that that was workable and was persuadable in Ithaca, but maybe not here. Maybe. I don't know. But that's what I that's where I would do my first research would be to find out where those R1 and R2 districts are and see whether they, in fact, do extend up the hill or not. Um, uh there was a couple of other things I was going to say, but I can't remember for the moment. I'll get back to that. Thanks, Chris. Janet, go ahead. So I think maybe we need like homework assignments. So Nate, you, you're you suggesting, you know, the RG is right now zoned for nine units per acre, seven with footnote M, you know, and so if we go down to three, what does that look like? Like, what does that zoning change look like? Um, I think you should also think of the RM, which is four units an acre too which is, you know, much more diffuse um, residential. So like, let's take a look at that as a bylaw um, and how that, and then look at how that would work. Um, and then also if you're requiring owner occupancy, what's the impact on existing multifamily units in there? And it might be, you know, six houses that get affected and they get, you know, kind of ignored or, um, but, you know, I, I keep on thinking, you know, and then the next thing we look at is somebody get a deep dive into Ithaca and then also looking at the minimum distance requirement. Um, and I just, you know, I don't think it's just, you know, controlling the behavior of students. My husband went to Amherst College. He lived here for two years afterwards. When we were looking in town, he's like, we don't, we're going to look in South Amherst. We're not going to North um, Amherst because of students. I hear from lots of people I respect that their neighborhoods are turning over to students, mostly the small kind of 60s, 1960s ranch neighborhoods, and they're in South Amherst. Nobody here, I think, lives near students except for maybe Jesse. And, you know, one of my neighbor's friends, Joe, this fantastic guy, lived in Amherst for like 30 years, 40 years, on I think it was Shumway Street or the one next to it, which is almost all student rentals, the constant partying, you know, the driveways. It's actually like a ghost town now. And he sold his house and he moved. You know, and so we hear the story over and over again. Um, that's the story we would have to tell town council. It's not healthy for the town. It's not healthy for neighborhoods. It's not, it's really sad to lose people who've been here for decades because there's just too many students. And it's, you know, I live next to a rental house um, and I have lived in a rental house. And, you know, it's, there is a qualitative difference if, if a house is constantly turning over, like I just don't invest in the people my neighbor next door, who I actually knew beforehand um, until he moved in there, is, you know, he's just great. And you know, we have social relations. I wouldn't be alienated or ignore students, but you do tend to do that. And if your whole neighborhood is filled with students and you're constantly asking them to quiet down, like, what are we asking people to put up with, you know? And so I just, I just think that we have to have some concrete suggestions amongst ourselves, understand the ins and outs of them, pick one or two. And then go to the planning board and say, hey, we think this could be a viable option. And it's going to be an uphill battle, I think, with the town council. But maybe maybe not. We don't know who will be on in a few years. Maybe it would be great to hear a success story where we're weighing things. And like, if we weren't worrying about where students can go, A, 
pressure on UMass to build some dorms. We have units coming on 11 East Pleasant Street. Um, we have units. And then Deerfield is sort of, I mean, South Deerfield and, and Sunderland are losing students because they're all moving in. So maybe they can move out, move back out there. So it's it's kind of like, you know, whatever we do will have an impact. It will have adverse and positive things, but we can't do nothing. If we do nothing, we're going to lose, you know, it's just like, we're just throwing our hands up. I don't, I just, I, you know, that's not the kind of thing I, you know, to me makes any sense. And also it's like, when you know someone personally, I've met people who have literally left yeah. their neighborhood. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Bruce? Um, I'm thinking that uh, in terms of uh, um, finding out what is the out of the possible of getting something through council, um, we could also consider uh, uh, talking to Pat DeAngelis and Mandy Joe Haneke. Uh, they uh, started this conversation really uh, almost two years ago or coming up two years ago with a proposal that was very comprehensive and it was and it was it was too comprehensive because uh, or, 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 or uh, wide uh, this, the, the widespread the all-encompassing because it kept changing as as we would comment on it then they would change it and then ultimately it became confusing but um it uh, we we could make a uh, say focused on the RG as you were saying Nate and uh, and and uh, as Janet, you are saying, uh, do something. Um, and uh, it's working with them, figure out what was the out of the possible, because it may or may not be student uh, home definition, or if it was, it might be a student home definition, and in, in, in some way that would be workable to them. It may be that by knowing more about what student home definition means or has meant in other communities. Um, it, uh, but my suggestion is if, uh, 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 that we could, uh, because there is a, it's not as though there's an overwhelming majority of the council that doesn't support the the kind of things, Jesse, that I think are in your head and that have, you know, variously in mind as well and others here. I think it's uh, one or two people would... Uh, um, be all that you would need to get um nate i imagine uh can you help me is are we uh, is only changes of this sort uh, require a two-thirds vote of council or is it a simple majority these days it's two-thirds and there's you know the state has said some is by majority it depends but you know most of it would be by super majority yeah well if we could get you know a frecade to actually vote on something rather than abstaining all the time uh, in other words, another way around this is to uh, is to work directly with some of these councillors. Now, Freke is my local guy. I know him. I'm very disappointed with the fact that he doesn't ever declare himself. I think abstentions in, in positions like that is, is, is almost sinful. Um, you really have to think and declare yourself. Uh, so maybe I can persuade him to you know, have a little bit more backbone. Um, and uh, Patty Angelis is an old friend. Um, she's still talking to me, um, uh, and or she was last week. Uh, and so, you know, I think uh, this uh, becomes extra to the board and so forth. But in terms of a strategy, it's a matter of finding out what is possible, uh, what is supportable and uh, building a bridge and i would think that those two candidates would uh, those two councillors would be very uh, um, would be appropriate targets because they've invested so much already in trying to do some of what we're talking about and and it wasn't i think that anybody on the board who voted uh, unanimously when we voted unanimously not to endorse this it wasn't that we dis that, that we uh, disapproved of the whole thing it's just that we couldn't, it was too complicated and there was too much that was, um, wasn't either comprehensible or it was um, too mercurial. So I think if, if, uh, if we could work the other way with them, uh, rather than just uh, catching the, the fly ball that they hit 
or, or dropping it, which we did, as opposed to moving it a little closer and trying to <laughs> pitching underarm and seeing how uh, successful do, we do. Do we know if there, I, I feel like I heard a couple months ago that there was something else or some version of it coming back in some form. Do you know anything about that? No, I don't. Uh, the rental bylaw you're talking about. Yeah. Well, no. Well, that also. <laughs> Okay. I mean, uh, this is a to and fro thing, uh, but I, I think that, that uh, you know, as I said, you can uh, we can build big apartments and we can pursue that course. But if we want to pursue some of the more subtle uh, courses uh, uh, that, that, that at the council level, then I think we have to be a little bit more politic um, yeah. with a capital yeah. P quite, about quite it. well taken, for sure. Go ahead, Nick. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah. I mean, when, when Jenna mentioned what I said, I wasn't necessarily saying like, you know, concretely three units or whatever, but, you know, having a really concrete strategy. Right. So I don't know what number is right or if owner mm -hmm. occupancy is the right. But like, you know, as Jenna was saying, like really, you know, bring it down to something that, you know, we can research and, and use. Um, after the first meeting, I, you know, I had a list of things I wanted to send to this housing subcommittee. And one is the town's comprehensive housing policy that they adopted it's a few years ago now but you know in it they list like 50 strategies and you know ideas for how to you know what could be you know zoning regulation changes or general bylaw other regulations or partnerships and you know maybe we maybe at one point we go through that as well and say okay is there something here we'd use um i mean i like the idea of you know looking at you know one or two things that can promote density in town and then one or two things that that maybe don't or are you know, um, you know, control it a little bit more in, in terms of whether it's, um, you know, units per acre with design guidelines, you know, in certain districts or whatever it be. And so, I, you know, I don't, I don't, yeah, I mean, I probably, you know, there's, everyone probably has a few ideas and I think some of it might be, we have to get it down on paper and then prioritize and say, what do we want to move forward? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I agree. I mean, I think Pat and Mandy Joe's proposal, I think some of it was, it seems really perfunctory, like let's just change no's to special permits and yeses to something. And, you know, you go through these changes, but I think what staff ended up finding out was that it had, you know, a lot of um, implications in terms of what could change. And the difficulty being that, you know, if you allow triplexes by site plan or view in a lot of districts, you know, who's to say that that just isn't going to become mostly students. And so it, it wasn't necessarily getting at the goal of what their proposal was to allow, say, non-student households. And so I think that might always be a difficult thing to determine in Amherst and discern, you know, is that the upshot of what we're doing? You know, is this change going to, act, you know, bring in different non-student households? But, um, you know, that's where I think if we had some strategies that allow, this is where we want, you know, where we can have students and these are others, um, so yeah, I don't I don't know what's the best solution. I mean, sometimes I think minimum distance is interesting. You know, every property that is in existence now would be grandfathered. And so then the question is, you know, at what point does that change? Like, you know, upon change of ownership, I haven't followed or seen what the new rental registration bylaw looks like in terms of, you know, I, I knew it probably a few versions ago and it's been changing. You know, what does that do? Um so yeah, I mean I I, I yeah, maybe there's, you know, we research and we start getting a few things down and um, and I'll try to send, I'll send the policy out and a few other documents. I mean, the policy does list probably like 50 or 60 strategies. I don't know if it's anything we would use, but. Yeah, that would be helpful to look at for sure. Yeah. Janet, go ahead. So I, I do think we, it'd be great just to look at, um, you know, the minimum distance, get details on that, um, the, the Ithaca thing, you know, we have a lot of density already zoned into our town, like a remarkable amount. What we don't have is clarity. Like we have a lot of conflicting ways to do it. And I'd be all for simplifying like anything from like, I don't know if a duplex, you even need it, but like a triplex up and, you know, versus converted versus, you know, subdividable and, you know, to make it just an easier path. But each of those different ways of you know, getting multifamily housing, there's protections in this and there's protections in that. And then I think my problem with Mandy Joe was just, just kind of threw the doors open and the good parts of multi of converted dwellings or subdividable was, wasn't considered. And so 
Um, I would, you know, so I, I you know, I kind of think it's like we just, you know, supersized university drive. Um, but like, you know, I'm all for increasing density, but we have to like balance that. And I think we need to reduce the density in neighborhoods. We need to make it much easier to build multifamily housing anywhere, but also in a way that doesn't flood the neighborhoods with students, right? And, you know, I mean, Barry Roberts did a lovely thing on Fearing Street. The whole RG could become that. And is that our vision for our town? You know, very expensive housing, very dense housing. You know, he bought up two lots. He could put his X amount of units in. Or do we want to preserve our neighborhoods? They can be converted to multifamily houses, these gorgeous Victorians with some additions. Um, what do we want? And what if they're all filled with students? And so I think I'm all against increasing any density if it's all going to be student housing, unless it's directed. So I just think we need to start looking at very concrete examples. We're not going to have like a super fix, but if there's no way to control the impact of student housing in these neighborhoods that are under threat, I think we failed, you know, we failed our job and we should start there. The political process isn't really the job of this committee. We could talk to Ithaca, we could talk to State College and say, what led you to this? Or how did it get put through? Maybe some town councilors do it. Maybe there's a change in counselor. Maybe people take a nice night walk through these neighborhoods on a Friday night or Saturday night at one in the morning, because I think people don't understand what is happening in these neighborhoods. You know, I mean, you know, that might be, you know, it's like taking a police ride around, you know, kind of thing. And so I, I just think we need to start doing, looking at very specific examples and, you know, I don't know if we can sit back and, look at everything in 20 different examples. I, I just think we have like what worked, what worked. And if this worked, let's but focus on that. Do we, do we know where anything worked? I mean, that, that, you know, I looked at some of the stuff Bruce, you put together and just from hearing you talk about it, it's unclear that any particular strategy actually was successful or that we have a measure, like we, we don't have a measure. Right. Well, I think the, the minimum, the, the State College have made the minimum distancing regulation work. They've stuck with it for quite a while. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Often it's an uh, individual, somebody who's, uh, you know, a, a, um, a champion, you know. Yeah. Uh, 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 they've, they've made that work. Uh, other towns uh, like Newark uh, in Delaware had uh, minimum distancing and they moved away from it because they found they couldn't make it work. And one of the problems, one of the, the challenges is, is it can be staff intensive, particularly where you are right. defined as you need to a student home, then you have to go around and, and do what Fred, I think is suggesting was one of the difficulties of this is that this is, you have to be able to make a determination that's um, defensible as to what a student home is and then uh but the uh, state college uh have made it work newark didn't and i'm not sure about villanova where uh where the, i mean the 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 uh the town in which villanova is situated in philadelphia where it started i'm not sure what their experience was but uh it's it's hard to know and my guess is that it's it's at least in part and probably strongly in part uh, related to individuals and uh, who've, who've decided that they want to uh, make something work. The staff intensity of these things is, is not inconsiderable. And the other thing, the, when I was talking to Ed LeClaire in State College about this, he said you also have to recognize that when you implement a minimum distancing regulation, you are essentially creating scarcity. And you have to understand, you know, that, that this is the what that means, you know, uh, and how to manage it. So um, I, I don't think there's a simple answer here, but if you want to do something, you have to be damn sure that there has to be a, there has to be some solid championship of this thing. It's not, uh, you're not rolling dice here. You, if somebody is deciding this is what's going to happen and they're dragging the carcass uh, through the streets saying, this is, uh, yeah, but... we're going to, we're going to get this through town, so to speak. The, the other problem I've been thinking about a little bit is if you are going to minimum distance, but you don't have the student definition, 
you too. can't you have to start with but you, right. you, you, can't, start with you can't you can't do a minimum distancing of something you haven't defined right so, it can't just be all rentals because then the whole price just goes up because it's, so, right. it's not going to work that has to be in these regulations they have to define it right they and that's do. where I, I was trying like i think they I, do they do and and they have uh and uh, say college have persisted in sticking to their guns on the definition of a student home. And uh, Leclerc said to me that other parts of the country, it's been uh, somewhere in Ohio, I said, he, he said it's uh, the, the, the federal district court there had, uh, had if I recall, it's uh, it been stricken right. down or they've been challenged, successfully challenged. So they, they're, they're, that's that's outside their jurisdiction. Their uh, state college is still able to do what they do so far, um, but he wasn't sure that it it wouldn't uh, he, they wouldn't have to um, deal with such a challenge. I don't understand the legality of all of that because I thought I understood that, like you, that it's not a protected class. So I don't know what the basis for whatever happened in the sixth district was. But all of this stuff would have to be understood, and uh, by by us if we wanted to uh, um, move forward with any uh, effective um, proposal for introducing a minimum distancing regulation in this town. I would think I would think we would have to understand all these things better than all I did was a, in a forty five minute conversation with this man. Uh, got got the best forty five minutes out of out of him that I could. <laughs> Nate, go ahead. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I um, I just say, I think to your uh, point, sometimes it's also about like, you know, the time it takes and the effort. And, you know, it, it, we spoke with, you know, we, you know, it took a while for the planning board to discuss university drive and then, you know, who knows how long it'll take to move forward and then get implemented. But, you know, as we look at strategies or ideas, I mean, some of it could be, you know, and maybe some of it's also a talking point for the council and the community is that, you know, Bruce, so what you're, I think what you're talking about is sometimes it evolves, right? Some communities, they try something and then they change. And I think we're, we haven't, you know, say traditionally been quick enough or we haven't done that with our zoning, right? We, we don't want to say, okay, well, maybe this is a three or five year horizon and then we have to change our zoning, but maybe it has to, maybe we, we go in and we want to change the density in town. Um, you know, there's some areas where we, limit density in other areas where we allow it. And, you know, and perhaps the idea is that this is a five-year horizon for this. And in the meantime, we're going to work on other strategies that could be more complicated, but I, I you know, it might just take kind of that approach yeah. and that explanation. I mean, I just think what happens is people think, well, wow, this, you know, this will be now forever. This will be, you know, it'll take too long to change again. And maybe we have to, you know, kind of look at it as these are going to be evolving strategies and we might have to change them. And, uh, you know, and that just hasn't, we haven't had that approach yet. So, you know, to me, I say density because it's, that's something that instead of researching the legality of a definition or something, if we, you know, I don't know, it, you know, it could be something that we could do and say, okay, in these zones is this, and these zones is something else. Or, I mean, honestly, I, sometimes I think our zoning districts are so complicated in terms of the geographic boundaries and how they're interwoven. And, you know, do we create some other I hate to say overlays, but you know, something where, right. These are, this kind of density is allowed and this isn't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I just, I feel like there's probably some approaches in terms of timeliness, right. I don't want to say, let's look at minimum distance and we spend a year researching it and then proposing it. It's like, are there things that we could move quicker on Jesse, if that's what you're hoping. And I don't, you know, I don't, you know, so, anyways. So yeah, that's what I was thinking about too. Uh, it shouldn't take a year. It should take a week. <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe we should, uh, well, I only have a few more minutes. Um, I like your idea, Janet, of sort of assignments. It helped really help me take a little focus and ownership. Um, maybe as the, I mean, the correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like maybe the path of least resistance, or at least for, for us to put something together that we can try and move forward is a simple zoning, not simple, but zoning changes, right? Um, to our existing bylaws, rather than come up with something entirely new, like the student rental definition or something like that. Um, and so maybe for next week, we could each pick some piece to dig into, to report back or present back for the group. Um, Fred, we didn't even get to 
any more footnote M or subdividable talk. So maybe that can be on your plate. Uh, we'll move that to the front next time. Janet, do you want to look at the zoning, the number of units issue, maybe a little more detail? From our you know, yeah, I, I mean, I was sort of thinking I could just, it, I mean, I don't know if you got sites to the Ethica thing, um, Bruce, if, if you actually got like the link to the Ithaca language or the state college language. Well, you've um, got everything I got. I sent it to everybody. Oh my God. Did I? Okay. Did I, I get that? I'm not sure. For example, those things that uh, Chris sent out from John Vana yesterday or the day before, I I, uh, I got, uh, I talked to John over a year ago. It's all in the package that I sent you. I think we never completed that circle. So I think I might have access. And Nate, I was trying to give you access. Do you remember? <laughs> Nate, Nate and I will follow up on that and make sure we all oh, have access. I didn't, get, that. I didn't get that. Yeah, I, so, think, yeah. I think we never finished yeah, that. Well, well it's, I, it's, it's, uh, you've got a folder on every each of the 15 towns. Some yeah. of the folders are empty because I haven't gotten into them. Some of them are a bit full because I've done some of the web related research and downloaded reports and various things. And some of them have got reports of conversations with planning directors and other people or other people in town. And, uh, and then you've got the summary documents and there's a few other things besides like Varna's stuff, but the, the state college folder is full of uh, this kind of stuff. And the okay. Ithaca folder has got the, it's probably got the zoning. Well, I can't remember, but I, 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 I've, I've dug around in the websites of most of the towns as best I could, you know, uh, and then I often talk to people in town and ask them to help me find stuff that they said was there or that should have been there, but I couldn't. And then when you went in some obscure little corner of some goddamn page on the website, suddenly <laughs> there was a whole lot of shit there, you know, that kind of stuff. And so, um, yeah, anyway, it's all, all of what I've spent six months collecting, or not six months, yeah. Uh, I, I'm there, at the various now. periods over six months. It's all I, I've sent it out to all of you. I thought I had. You, you, you did. So you shared it with me. I tried to share it with Nate. I'm not sure that actually worked. And I'm now trying to share it with the others. So okay, okay. we dropped. So the, I, I dropped I the ball. Get, I mean, I'm not on the committee, so maybe that's why I'm I'm out of the loop. No, that that was that wasn't. No, it. I, it was, I, I didn't get I didn't get it either. And I think um. I don't know to try to go on through my home computer because you know the town is kind of restricted how we share files. Um, <laughs> okay, so what's the of... right, Nate? What is the right way to do it so you can access it? I thought we different we, email we went, or we went through this. I shared my Dropbox folder. Yes, and... I, I I have that access. It's now mm -hmm. on Google Drive. Right, and we're not recommended to use Google Drive or Dropbox, so I can't even open anything that has a Dropbox uh, okay. web. Okay, yeah. so what what can you use? Yeah, let me, um, I'm, I'll just go, you know, I, let me just go back into my, you know, this week I'll go I to my home computer and just try to get it, pull it again. Okay. Um, I thought, you know. Nate, you and I managed to ultimately confirm that you had received uh, the folder, the nested set of folders that I uh, sent you. I thought we figured that out. I seem to have an email that said that. I think Jesse had. I don't think I, I have, ever. I have access. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, let's work on that. Just Jesse, right. you, me, and yeah. Bruce can. Um, okay. Yeah. We'll figure that out. Okay. Um, anyone want? Anybody want to volunteer to take a different assignment or something? I don't, I don't want to take all the pieces. <laughs> oh, definitely not. Okay. Uh, Jesse, um, I, I, I want you to tell me what you're doing. Frankly. Okay. Uh, I I I know what I would do, but it's uh, and I've already done it. Uh, yeah. uh, so, at least I'm in the process of doing it. I, so, I could uh, go back, but at the moment I'm I'm not so enamored of the minimum distancing stuff. But I I might find that it would be uh, a, an interesting component of something else. So okay. I I would like to keep thinking about that. I'm gonna try and dig up details on the student rental definition because I feel like that's where it has to start. Yep. So we can discuss if that's a viable path and what the problems could be. Certainly Why don't we all look at that? Then we can sure. have a conversation that okay. everybody has thought about because I think if everybody is looking at something different, we're not going to move forward. Okay, sounds fine. So for next week, we'll do student rental definition and talk about what the problems and consequences are of that. And yeah. uh, yeah. Nate, 
in terms of the um, reducing the density, that's just messing around with the dimensional table, right? Yeah, I mean, I think some of it would be um, look, doing that. Yeah, doing that, but also could be like you know geographically in town, where do we think there's appropriate? And then you know, I would then I'd probably almost do it that way, and then look at the dimensional table. Because uh, I've often thought like the RN should not have four units per acre; it should be maybe max three. And then the RG might be max four units an acre, you know, because that's that's a lot of, you know, or five or something like that. But that's just playing with the numbers in the dimensional table, right? So, yeah, it know. goes to it goes to footnote M, and I mean, I almost feel like right. It's it's to me, it would be simpler if we said, okay, if it's five units an acre, and then you allow like a prorated amount per, you know, a smaller lot or something. It just you have this really easy formula to follow as opposed to. Or it could be this, or if it's by special permit, it's this. It'd just be kind of a, a simpler way to state it. Yeah, because I think it's easier. I mean, my idea is just get rid of footnote M, which just it makes my head hurt, and just say X amount of units per acre. I don't care if it's a townhouse or a triplex or, you know, whatever. Just, you know, like maybe I don't care if it's four huts. I don't know. You know, but just that's, you know, at least start from that point, And then you could start tinkering with what the building looks like in other ways. So. I mean, I would love to get rid of as many footnotes and flexibility as possible because just I think it just it becomes no one understands what's going on anymore. But so the, I think that change that it's just a change to the dimensional table, basically, in terms of units per acre. So I think that's just, you know, easy to write, you know, but um, but, you know, I would I, I could look at the Ithaca stuff and just see, you know, what did that look like? It's pro it looks like a fairly, you know, it's probably a, an easy change from four unrelated people to three two, you know, and then why did they go to two? But that's all in Bruce's stuff, right? So, well, some of it is. I I, I would suggest that you look at uh, that uh, in relation to zones, because I'm not at all sure that that's a blanket definition, a, a blanket restriction all over town. Oh, okay. It's, it's in certain places, and I think it would be interesting to know where they've where they've declared that limitation and where they haven't. Okay. That so, might tell us whether it's relevant to Amnesty or not. Okay. Fred? Uh, yeah, I want to uh, be careful about introducing uh, enormous amounts of nonconformity. Uh, uh, and as the person who created the original version of Footnote M, that was very carefully researched based on zoning and uh, density patterns in the RG zone. And uh, one of the points was, and, and, and it, there are some problems with the way that it's become clear over time in terms of how it was written, not just the change from six to four, um, uh, 6,000 6, to 4,000, but uh, that's why uh, that was, uh, was, was chosen. Uh, in its original form, and it should probably go back to that, I think. And it's, uh, it's, it's uh, it, there are some uh, problems. I'd be happy to uh, take a close look at that for the next meeting or a subsequent meeting, um, along with I've, I've also been assigned subdividable, which, yeah, I can do that as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I've got to run. Apologies. Uh, so there's no, there are no other public attendees. So I guess there's no public comment. And unless anyone has something else, the un unanticipated items. I think we're done. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Just, just one thing. The next meeting is in person. Uh, I'd be happy for it to be Zoom. Actually, that's better for me. Anyway, so let's. Well, yeah, I wanted to raise that because I'm not clear I will be that degree of mobile. Oh, right, of course, that you look time. great, Fred. Congratulations, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm mobile in the house. <laughs> yeah, good. And I, you know, but uh, whether I'm, I, I don't think I, for example, I don't think I'll be driving at that point. Sure, sure. Okay, so we'll plan Zoom for next week again. All right, thank you. Okay, thanks everyone. See you then. Right. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye all.